I mentioned that one of the biggest problems with Obamacare is that what happened is that they invite they they invested a trillion dollars in healthcare, and then who made the money? Well, let's think about this. There's a Wall Street Journal article from 2015 um, called "Fund Bosses Gamble on Health Law Pays Off Big," and then it says um, Glenview Capital made. $3.2 billion over four years off their investment in the health insurance, in the healthcare business. And why? Why do they make so much money? Because they betted on the government subsidizing the industry. And then they made so much money. So, like I've said, one of the biggest problems with the health insurance industry is that you have all these publicly traded companies that are making bank off the government. And what's the real secret to predicting the stock market? Um, spy on Congress people and spy on the government and, and figure out what's going to go through and then that's how you do it. So anyways, so my idea on health insurance instead of making Wall Street rich is I'm going to go take government money. I'm going to buy out two large health insurance companies, say Blue Cross Blue Shield, and I'm going to go buy out United Health. I don't even know if I would buy out those two. I might, I might buy out smaller ones. And then I'm going to take their actuaries and I'm going to take their employees and I'm going to expand them to a larger market. And then I'm going to use their databases and then I'm going to bring in some of these government people that probably work for the NSA or work for uh, whoever. And I'm going to say, all right, guys, um, what we're going to do is we're going to migrate their databases to a larger server and we're going to um, we're going to um, expand healthcare to a larger group of people. And so I'm going to use their employees so that we, so that customers still have a nice environment, but then like, but then it's easier for us because they already are super experienced in the health insurance business. So, um, it would make it way easier on us to have, a, a, a it's, it's a government sponsored health insurance company. So maybe I'm going to spend a trillion dollars still. And when I spend that trillion dollars, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to have software so that if you want to go to a hospital during it for an emergency room visit, the first thing you're going to do is get on your phone and you're going to talk to an RN at two o'clock in the morning and say, uh, I'm sick. And she's going to say, well, do you, what, are, are you experiencing any chills? Like she's going to ask you all the questions they ask you. And then you're going to go, yes, I am. And she's going to go, okay, well you might need to, I, I, I agree. You need to go to an emergency room. And so by doing that, we're going to cut down on hospital visits. And, um, but also, um, I'm going to put a lot of people out of business, like put a lot of health insurance companies out of business. Why? Because I don't think that we need to have so many of them because I believe that when you consolidate risk, okay, it's part of your group one. I, I have my group one license. Well, I did have it. I, I don't know if I have to renew it. I don't know anything about insurance anymore, but I did have my group one license and one thing they talk about is consolidating risk. And so if we have a larger pool to consolidate risk, it's actually better from a price perspective. Um, but, um, more than, but another good thing about consolidating a lot of people under the same health insurance plan, so say I put out all these people out of business and then, we're all, and then everyone decides I'm actually going to use your health insurance policy because the government's subsidizing it, so of course it's less expensive. And, um, and one thing that we're going to do with that is we're going to consolidate medical records. We're going to anonymize them. We're going to make it so that people don't know it's yours. But if you do an MRI, I want my computer program to be able to see your MRI because I want a, a doctor to diagnose it. And I want another doctor at all. Like you're going to have your own doctor. That's going to say, okay, I see that you have a herniated disc. And then, um, and then that's the, di that's the diagnosis, but also we're going to, hopefully we're going to, um, try to, I've talked about it in the past, um, um, trying to, to generalize, um, forms like, and, and, and like questions that the doctor asks you. And so that we can input those into medical records also so that we can do research because, um, what's the secret to doing artificial intelligence? It's, um, having a lot of data. And so if we can, um, create forms that are like, this is what you're asked when this is the problem. Uh, like every time you go to, every time you go into a doctor because you're getting uh, radiation, they ask you the same questions. And, um, and, and that, that could be generalized and so, so that our forms are similar and so that 
uh, when we have your medical data, it's easier to understand for the computer. And so um, by, by consolidating medical records, um, can we like, change the world? Yes. Is the United States so far behind as far as medical data compared to other countries? Probably why? Because everything's so secret. Like your 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 medical conditions are private, and there's a reason they're private. It's because it's your own private information. But if we can anonymize that data and then share it, um, it could really make a difference from a research perspective. Because we do want to make medical research uh, advances uh, or medical advances through research. But right now, one thing that's holding everyone back is it's very difficult to get access to medical records. Um, so, but I was talking about reducing the price of healthcare. I don't think people fully understand that when the individual mandate disappeared from Obamacare, that that was like the death sentence to your, to the entire health insurance industry. That means that like this, the rates going up like this went like this because young people like me are not going to participate in the same health insurance pool, um, as, as like we're, we're just not going to buy insurance anymore. Like right now, I don't have insurance. Why? Because I don't have a job. And will I have insurance? I think I've talked about it in the past. I'll, I'll have a health savings account once I get a job. Um, it was called HSA. Um, because I don't, I don't really think that I'm, I'm a very high risk person at my age because I'm 34 years old. I will be 35 before the presidential campaign or before the presidential election. Well, before I get inaugural, before I be, before I become president of the United States, I will be 35 years old, so I'll be old enough. Um, so um, I think that if we don't do something serious about health insurance, then we're in really big trouble. And so um, I know I'm, I haven't done. I, I wish I did a better job talking about it, um, but um, I don't think people fully understand. The, how much rates can go up. And so um, that's my stance is we need to put people out of business. If we put you out of business, then we're going to make sure you find a job because we'll have a job placement website where you can upload your resume and we'll have a artificial intelligence program, scan your resume and it will look for, um, well, we, you can, uh, uh, we'll have a, I, I want to create this website for people in general and it will um, look for people in the health insurance industry and that lost their job and then find ways to place them in jobs that um, will benefit society. Because right now we have a lot of people that have jobs that, like I've said, they're digging holes just so they can look at the hole. 